Cool. Hey guys, uh, my name is Max. I am a software engineer for a company called Trustwork. Um, we are building tools to empower entrepreneurs and business owners and creators to, you know, run their businesses effectively. We are really good with small uh, to medium sized businesses right now. We've got messaging tools, payments, project management, and all kinds of stuff. But uh, so we've got, you know, a number of website websites that are running a main one. And then we've also got a native app. And part of our website, a requirement we have is to uh, render our websites uh, server side so that we can get SEO benefits. And when we were starting, we didn't really we we're trying to sift through all the tools. And so we liked create react app as we're, we're doing react on our website. Um, but create react app is just for static sites. Uh, it's not op it's not built for, it doesn't enable server side rendering out of the box. Um, we looked at things like Next.js, and we just kind of felt like we wanted something a little bit more unopinionative like create react app, but we didn't really find anything out there. So after sort of spinning up our own, uh, site, just, from the ground up using Webpack and everything. Uh, we ended up building what we wish we had about a year ago when we started. Um, we're calling it Create React SSR app. And <clears throat> the way we did is we shamelessly basically stole uh, all the ideas and most of the code from Create React app. We basically started with that project and just did the minimal changes from there to accommodate server-side rendering. So what I wanna do is just take a little bit to show you guys how the tool kind of works on the back end how to spin it up and use it. And um, if you guys are interested in checking it out and you ever need something like that, you can check it out. It's on GitHub at our Trustwork Tech uh, GitHub page and you can try it out yourself. So I figured I'd start with just, for anyone who's not uh, familiar with Create React App, it's a Facebook project that with one command, you can spin up a production ready React App and it's very, unopinionated meaning it doesn't take an opinion on like things like routing or state management. It's only dependency is react and that's it. And it has a bunch of build tools on the back end uh, that are sort of abstracted away uh, to, to handle things like uh, if I just, if I just look at the API here um, you have things like a yarn test to run tests, you have a build command and then you have a start command up here um, the start command starts the app in development mode with hot reloading and everything. Test will run a bunch of tests for you using Jest. Build will build your uh, app for production and generate all the, the production bundles. And then they also have an eject command where you can eject out of their uh, abstraction and then just get more close to the actual configuration. So what Create React SSR app does is basically the same thing. We really like that model of one dependency um, to manage all the build tools and then with the option of ejecting and everything and not taking any other opinions other than using React and also using Express for the rendering server. Since now we're doing server-side rendering, we're not rendering, uh, the app is not served statically, it's served from a node app. So that's the only opinion that we took on this was if you want, you know, if you don't want to use node, then you can't use this tool, but that's, we thought that that was a reasonable you have to make some sort of assumption if you're going to build a tool like this. So we chose node. Um, so what I th thought I'd do is just um, do a quick demo on, on how this works. I'll spin it up and show you guys how to use it uh, right away. And then I'll talk a little bit about how it works under the hood. So you can get started just by this command on the documentation. Um, and let me go and spin this up. So if I were going to run this, say like my SSR app, it's going to run a script that'll generate the, the boilerplate of the files. Um, for people who are familiar with create react up, it's, it's the same thing. And then it's also going to, you can see it's installing express react react Dom, and the react SSR scripts dependency, which has all the build scripts and the start and test scripts as well. Um, so once this is done, you'll see, It'll give you a quick overview of the different uh, commands that you can run. So just give this a second. Just kind of giving you a live demo to show, you know, how quick it is to just get up and running. And then, so it sort of tells you that the file, the folder was created in my SSR app and you've got these four commands available to you. So if I go into that, um, I'll just open this folder up into a 
into an editor. And before I get started, what I'll try first is just uh, run yarn start. So assuming we're, we want to start this thing in development mode, what it's going to do is it's, it's going to start a, a Webpack dev server to, to serve the client code, right? So when you're in server-side rendering mode, uh, just a quick overview of how it works. It hits your node server and then it renders a full version of the app and returns that. And then the client sort of takes over and it starts rendering in the client as well. So you have like two concepts. You have a rendering server, which is a node server, but you also have in dev mode, you have a dev, dev server, like a Webpack dev server, which is sending your JS bundles. Um, so this thing is up and running and I can, it's just a boilerplate. So I can, it says you can like edit the source app JS and save and watch it reload. So if I were to go into the source here, you can see the structure. It has this app JS file. I can just, you know, add another exclamation point and this thing will live reload for you there. Um, so yeah, for those familiar with create react app, it's, it's basically the same thing. We didn't, we're not trying, we weren't trying to, you know, reinvent anything that they already did. We're just trying to basically do the same thing with server side rendering. So if you look at the structure of this folder, um, there's two main folders on the source. There's the client and the server. The client folder is where like code only runs on the client. So with server side rendering, you have this concept of react rendering on the server first, and then you get back the HTML and then the client re-renders or hydrates. And then all the rest of the rendering happens on the client. So this, this client, code here is where the hydrate call happens. You could see if you're, fam if you're not familiar with react, a lot of this might, um, be a little bit foreign, but, um, for those familiar with react, you can see that we're really just hydrating whatever comes back from the server here. And then uh, on the server side we have, this is where our express app is configured and you can get, you know, you can customize how this express server works. Um, you can have your own middleware and everything. But at a minimum, what it's doing is it's just running a couple of different middlewares um, and it's, it's running one to serve static files. Those where the JS bundles get served. It's one, running a rendering middleware, which um, can just briefly show is all it's doing is just calling more or less. It's just calling react on render to string on your app. So you can see this app is shared both by both the client and the server and the client. We, we import the same app code that the server does. So you're sharing code. Another term for this is like isomorphic apps. If you guys have heard of that, it's where your app gets fully rendered on the server and the client. So you can, you know, have the same code fully rendered on the server, send it back to the client. And that's where you get that. Some of the benefits of server side rendering is you get an initial page performance boost because you get full relevant content coming back from the server since it's already rendered once rather than just getting like a shell back when you just are statically serving your site and then having to wait for the, the JS bundles to load before you see a render happen. This will send back a full render right away. Um, and so you can kind of tell when like you're reloading, you, you see a little bit of like content comes back right away without seeing like a blank page or anything. Um, let's see. So that is sort of the, the boilerplate, right? And so you can pretty much get by with, you know, in, in development mode, just using this, uh, it's got like a full blown support for CSS, SAS. Um, you can use, you can import assets and everything. It's pretty much got all the like webpack bells and whistles already fit in to do, I would say most of what you would need, at least, especially for like a simple app. But the, the main reason why we built this is because at Trustwork, we're actually using an ejected version of this today um, because we needed a little bit more customization on the webpack configuration. So what you can do is, um, well, first I'll show you, like you can do the yarn build and what this will do is it's going to generate production ready code. So it's compiling the client first because you have to create client bundles and then it's going to compile the, the server to create a server, a node uh, script file for running in production. So you can see the build folder that it generates, it creates an index file, which is your node cert, which is basically your node script. So you can run that in whatever you can run it in Heroku. You can run it in Docker, any, uh, any, uh, you know, production setting you choose. All you have to do is just start run like node build and your server is now running and right and listening on port 8,000. 
Um, then in the public folder, you have all of your uh, static content. So you have like your app.html file. That's sort of like your HTML template. Um, and the documentation goes in a lot more detail about all this stuff. So if this is you know not making sense, this is just a quick overview. And then you have your static folder, which has all your JS CSS bundles or whatever you use, uh, whatever static content, whatever media images or anything you bundle with Webpack will all get put in the static folder there. Um, so yeah, so that's the overview of the build, the start, and then let me uh, kind of go over the eject. So if you eject, it'll kind of give you a, show you the internals of what's going on here. So once you eject, you can't go back. Um, and it's gonna replace, right now, all the scripts are encapsulated behind this React SSR scripts, which is a concept that Create React App impl like implemented as well. And so when you eject, it's gonna replace these scripts with the actual like path to the code in your in your folder. So if we run yarn eject, it's gonna ask me if I'm sure, because it's permanent. If I say yes, uh, let me, uh, Let me check out uh, some, just make sure I'm on a clean Git branch. Okay, so let me eject. Cool, so it's it's gonna add a ton of dependencies. So once you eject, you get all the, the backend, like Webpack, Jess, ESLint, all that stuff gets packed into your, into your uh, package JSON there. You can see I, all that stuff got added in. And now I'm no longer using that React SSR scripts dependency. I'm just using the actual scripts that were moved into my project. And you can see the Jest config got moved in in the Babel. Um, so once you eject, right, I can customize the Babel uh, preset. I can customize Jest. I can customize ESLint. Um, I can even get into the config folders where you can see the Jest config files and spe more specifically, usually the main reason people would eject is to customize the Webpack config if, it, if you want something specific. As you can see here though, once we get into the HUD, you, the Webpack setup is pretty straightforward, but it, it's somewhat cumbersome. I would say like getting this stuff set up for server-side rendering isn't super straightforward. You have to have two different Webpack configs and you have two different build pipelines and you're creating two separate outputs. So you have the client one, and then, and then the server one is like slightly different because you're optimizing for node environment rather than the browser. Um, I won't go into all the details on this. It can, would take too long, but they share like similar load, loaders between the two and plugins and all that for anyone familiar with, with Webpack. And then you can see there's a Webpack dev server configuration. Um, and then your scripts are right here, your build, start and test scripts, which are gonna like bundle everything for you. Um, so yeah, that's that's the uh, quick overview. The last thing I'll I'll show before wrapping up is um, more documentation on the GitHub page, um, which I can share in the Slack channel if anyone's interested. And um, there's a website too. The funny thing is, like a lot of this is like almost exactly like Create React App, even the website, you know, because we didn't we just basically forked their project and just tweaked things until like to make it work for server-side rendering, so even the website is like more or less the same. And the docs, uh, because we, we made it like very unopinionative, there's different sections if you choose to like do things like use React Router, kind of gives you the best practices on how we, how we would implement it, but you don't have to do it this way, to for adding React Router or adding Redux, stuff like that. There's different sections in there if, if, if you are interested in using those tools. But it more or less is mainly focused on the build tool chain and, and sort of managing that side of it. So any, uh, yeah, that's it. Any questions or anything? Are we opening it for questions now? Cool. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, so it's becoming less as, as important because crawlers like especially Google are good at crawling JavaScript. But the main benefit is that normally when you load a website, you get this sort of shell of an HTML file. Um, like normally if, if we weren't, you know, server-side rendering, if we just open the public folder, you would get this shell, right? And then 
you would have this div tag and the way React works is after the JS bundles load, you would then render the actual content. So when, when crawlers hit your website, they, unless they're very smart at like sort of fetching JavaScript, waiting for the app to fully load before they crawl your app, they're not going to like read much of your site. So say you're loading profile data, like you have a route to load someone's profile. You wouldn't get the full data on the first load from the server. You would just get the shell and they'd have to wait for the JS to load before the app renders. But with server-side rendering, you can, you know, since you're rendering on node, you could do something like fetch profile data and then render and then respond to the client. And so then you'd be responding with full profile data. And so it's much easier for browsers to crawl the pages. And, and then you also get much better results on things like Internet Explorer, like Edge or Firefox, which aren't as powerful crawlers as like Google. We found that even today though, with as good as crawlers are getting, we've gotten much better SEO performance by having more control of the rendering at the node level rather than just statically serving the, the website. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anything like anything like that? Um, uh, yeah. Or if you've if you've started using anything. <laughs> oh, so, sorry. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So my question was uh, if. Uh, we're trying to implement uh, lazy loading of our modules uh, within a server-side uh, React application, and we're running into uh, basically using like suspense and React lazy and stuff like that, and we're running into issues uh, with using it with uh, with it being server-side. Uh, and I was just asking if you've, if you've run uh, or if you've uh, implemented anything sort of like that and the hurdles that you went through or something like that. Yeah, it's a good question. Um, so for us. We're still pretty like we're still pretty immature as a company, so we haven't dove into suspense a ton yet. But in messing around with it, yeah, it runs into issues. Like we haven't fully fleshed it out, even especially on this tool, quite yet. How to deal with that? Um, we can do like dynamic imports. It works with dynamic importing, and there are ways that we kind of talk about in the in the documentation or options of like how to handle data fetching on the server or how to like manage that dynamic because it is somewhat complex. Um, but it's something that I would say it's kind of like on our roadmap because we want to start taking advantage of suspense now that those features are more prevalent in React. So I would say it's something we're going to like actively work on in, on this project and I don't have like a solution because we haven't run into it yet. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh. Okay. Uh, just to follow up with your question, I mean, didn't the React team say that SS, uh, React Lazy and Suspense are not going to work on SSR? So we initially said that, but then we've been talking about SSR. Like, trying to sort of fix the thing. Um, but it's kind of curious, So you're more, you're more concerned on putting that stuff on the server side. Yeah, yeah. Our yeah, our sense on it would be that the our solution that we or that I initially thought of was that you just have to have some way of managing only lazy only doing the suspense on the client side, right? And like if you're if you're rendering that page server side, you don't really need that anyway because you're likely already fetching the data server side, which is much faster than client side, and then you're just going to render the page anyway. Um, so that's why I think. With the React team, I did read that it's not fully fleshed out, but you can just implement in your own code ways to not suspend if you're rendering, if you're on the server and only suspend if you're on the client. That would be sort of like our approach and something we would either implement if it makes sense in the tool or just add documentation for. Any more questions? All right, let's give it up for Max. Okay.